Open our eyes. Help us understand the spiritual warfare that's all around us. Help us understand the power that we have, that we can resist temptation. That's what your word says. Resist the devil, and he will flee. And that's what I'm sticking to. And I like it the way it says it. If you get a chance to read the Phillips uh, New Testament translation, it's really good. And this is from Romans 6 in the, in the Phillips translation, verses 6 and 7. It says, let us never forget that our old selves died with him on the cross, that the tyranny of sin over us might be broken. Can any of you relate to what the tyranny of sin is like? <laughs> Didn't take him long. <laughs> I'm right with you, man. I'm right with you. So all the rest of you just grew up as Christians and you never sinned. Come on. What was it like to be under the tyranny of sin? Man, he is a mean boss. He lies to you left and right, and he's such a good liar that you believe him. The tyranny of sin over us might be broken. Does it mean that when you become a Christian, you never commit another sin? No, because we're still in a broken world, but we're aspiring we aspire to be more like Christ. We want to be transformed into his image. He lived his whole life tempted just like we are, yet without sin. What a great thing to be aiming at. That's called the benchmark in our world, in, in the investment world. What's the benchmark that you're trying to aim at? Ours is Jesus, the perfect man. Tempted just like we were. Could have sinned, but didn't. So we died with him on the cross. And people don't like hearing that. You know, I can just tell you from doing this long as I've been doing it. We have a hard time trying to get our hands around that, and I'm going to try to unpack it a little. But I wrote up there that repentance strengthens our immunity. Can you say that? Repentance strengthens our immunity. So when we are living a double life and we, we know we should repent of something and we have it, it weakens our spiritual immune system because we know we're living a little bit of a lie. Just a little bit is enough to weaken us and, and allow the enemy to have a foothold, right? That's what the, the Word of God says. Don't give him a foothold. Give no place to the enemy. Speak the truth. Confess. Repent when you need to. For a dead man can safely be said to be immune from the power of sin. I just really like the way he said that. A dead man can be safely said to be immune to the power of sin. Now, of course, this is just a figurative form of death. And when it says that we should take up our cross daily... Then, then clearly he wants us to understand this as a very practical thing. The only reason you pick up a cross is for something to die. And every time they came to the temple to offer a sacrifice, something had to die on the altar. That's what the altar was for. That's what this is. This is an altar that we're on. But that's also what you are now. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and that Holy of holies that was behind the curtain in the tabernacle is now over our heart. So my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying basically every day we can keep separating wheat from the chaff. And whatever the chaff is that needs to go, that's what the fuel is that burns that fire on our altar. And we become more and more like him. And the way we'll get to the verse here in a little while, but it's almost like the cares of this world just start to float away because as you come up, as you keep cutting out and dying off that old man, that old nature, those old habits, you know, you can think about deliverance, but you get delivered from a habit that was tearing you down. And now you walk by a liquor store. In my case, I was addicted to alcohol and I don't feel any pull. I don't feel anything trying to pull me in there. It's like, hallelujah, who the sun sets free is free indeed. You start to get up higher away from the the, the bitterness and the anger of this world because that power that had me is gone now. Could it come back? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, that's still up to me whether I choose to live in obedience to the Lord. And if I start to drift, there's, you all know the concept of backsliding. But why would I ever go back to the counterfeit when I have the real thing now, right? I mean, my immune system got stronger. I'm not going to weaken it, amen? And not that I'm some hero, uh, one of the ways I like to think about this whole death, burial, and resurrection, and, you know, of course we understand that Jesus went to the cross. He died. He was resurrected. But it's also for us. There's no other way that we would have to pick up a cross daily if there wasn't something that we should be doing along this route, too. And this is what Michelangelo said. 
The sculpture is already complete within the marble block. Before I start my work, it's already there. I just have to chisel away the superfluous material. <laughs> Isn't that a great way to look at it? Like he's just trapped inside this big block of marble and all I'm doing is knocking away all the pieces. That's a good picture of what God wants of us. We're inside trapped by sinful behaviors that aren't allowed, allowing the world to meet the real Peter. Or the real, I could give you many examples. And I've talked to people when I was trying to convince them to come in for ministry and say, man, the devil is so afraid that the world is going to really meet the real you, who you were meant to be. He's got you trapped in this mess right now. But once you come out of that mess, he's going to be running from you. And that's, that's what I think of when I think of Michelangelo saying this. Part of our job as the body of Christ and why there's so much great immunity when we're together, right? We don't want to just be a lone ranger out there. We need each other. There's power and connection is because we're, we're growing into who he made us to be. And we all help each other do that. And that's the verse I was going to quote is, is from Hebrews 12, verse 1. It says, let us drop off every extra weight. So you can picture Michelangelo chipping away at the things that didn't belong there in order for you to become the masterpiece. Holy Spirit is helping chip away at those things that are stopping us from fully reflecting the character that God put inside of you. And this is why those word curses that were spoken over you by people who didn't know the Lord, who were wounded themselves, could even be your parents, could be people in your family. I played sports and some of the coaches used some really harsh language to motivate you with shame. And that works. That's the sad part. It works for a little while. You'll, you'll, you'll amp up your engine and you'll, you'll work out of anger and you'll work to try to prove they're wrong. But in the long run, you burn out. You can't operate off of shame. You've got to operate off of truth. And the truth is, like I said, that your pain should come from your discipline, not from the regret of not doing what, what you knew the Lord to do. So this is, let us drop every extra weight, every sin that clings to us and slackens our pace and let us run with endurance the long race that's set before us, right? There's no need to look at life like a sprint race. It's a marathon. For the rest of our lives, as long as we're here, and, and a lot of people we hang out with are in their 80s and like Bishop Hammond and I mean, like I said, when, I, when we just saw Doris Wagner, she's 92 in a wheelchair, still going out and doing deliverance conferences. <laughs> Where did these people come from? They don't know what the word retire means. And if you're writing books, I mean, you just get better at writing books because you got more downloads and more revelation the older you are. I heard one man who was 92. Remember Bishop Quander Wilson, 92, or maybe even older, right? He looked great. He said, you know one thing I found out in my long life? There's a little bit of God in everybody. Some people, you just got to look a little longer and a little harder to find where it is. <laughs> that's some wisdom right there. See, that's just saying I'm not ready to give up on these people because I know there's some good seed in there. And there's not, I might be looking at the package which is wounded and, and emoting all kinds of stuff at me. But I know there's a seed of God in there. I'm just going to keep praying that God awakens that seed in that person. And then the real statue, this masterpiece that's been buried in that marble just comes out. And the world just uses you as his poem. That's what the word says. Poetry. Poema. It's the word. We are his workmanship. He creates something beautiful out of us. Thank you, Lord.